In this video, we're going to be talking about the differences between osteoblasts and osteoclasts, which both have a role in bone remodeling, and that's the process of the breakdown and formation of new bone. Let's talk about osteoblasts first. So they are these cuboidal cells which have a single nucleus, and they have the main responsibility of synthesizing bone. They are mainly located on the outer surface of bone, and when they're undergoing bone formation, they actually work as a group of cells together. So it's not just one osteoblast making bone, they work together as a unit. Osteoblasts develop from mesenchymal stem cells, and for the mesenchymal stem cells to develop into osteoblasts, there needs to be the expression of specific genes including runt-related transcription factors 2, distal S homeo box 5, and osterix. When the osteoblasts are synthesizing bone, it usually occurs in two steps. First, we have the deposition of an organic matrix, and then we have the mineralization of the matrix. So first, we have the osteoblasts, which secrete collagen proteins, non-collagen proteins, and proteoglycans, which forms the organic matrix. That's like the scaffolding, or the main structural component. So you imagine there's scaffolding, which is the organic matrix, and then this scaffolding is then mineralized with more components to provide the, the structural integrity of bone. So we have the formation of that organic matrix. Then we have the mineralization of the bone, which also happens in two phases. We have the, the vesicular phase and the fibrilla phase. The vesicular phase, this is where vesicles or these little blobs from osteoblasts, they break off from the osteoblast and they contain calcium inside and then they bind onto the proteoglycans of the organic matrix. The osteoblasts release an enzyme called alkaline phosphatase which breaks down phosphate containing compounds inside these vesicles which, they've, uh, which have broken off from the osteoblasts. So phosphate is then released so inside these vesicles we have calcium and phosphate. They join together forming something called hydroxyapatite, and that's the main mineral which is present inside bone. So these vesicles, they contain more and more hydroxyapatite. Eventually they burst and it releases hydroxyapatite into the bone matrix, and that results in the mineralization of bone. Now that we know how bone is formed from osteoblasts, let's move on to osteoclasts. So osteoclasts are responsible for the breakdown of bone. They originate from hematopoietic stem cells, but they differentiate with the help of macrophage colony stimulating factor and RANKL along with some other factors. They are much larger than osteoblasts and are multinucleated. You can find osteoclasts in small pits in the bone surface called Howship's lacunae. When osteoclasts are breaking down bone, they form a special membrane layer, which is called the ruffled border and this is the surface which is opposite to the bone surface it's breaking down. The reason we have these folds in the ruffled border is because it increases the surface area for bone resorption. The attachment of osteoclasts onto the bone it's resorbing is via this sealing zone, which is where we have special structures called podosomes, which help to stick the osteoclast onto the bone. This area here is called the resorptive pit, which is the active area the osteoclast is breaking down. So the osteoclasts release hydrogen ions through the ruffled border and into the resorptive pit, which increases the acidity and facilitates the breakdown of bone matrix into calcium ions, bicarbonate and phosphoric acid. The osteoclasts also secrete enzymes like cathepsin K and matrix metalloproteinases to help with the breakdown of bone. The components of bone which is broken down are taken up by the osteoclasts and released to the rest of the body via the secretory zone in this area of the osteoclast.